Today we're talking about the infamous Pro Tools playback engine. So, what is the playback engine? What does it do? What do all the parameters in it mean? If you guys have those questions, then this is the tutorial for you. And if you guys want to know those answers, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about the Pro Tools Playback Engine. So what is the Pro Tools Playback Engine? So the Playback Engine is pretty much what makes Pro Tools run. It is where you're allocating your audio interface. It is where you're setting your hardware buffer size. It is pretty much what dictates how Pro Tools runs. It's whether it's gonna run for recording mode. It's whether it's gonna run for mixing mode. You basically determine that by how you set your settings within the playback engine. So we're gonna go over what all of that means in this video so you have a full understanding. But before we get to that, I wanna let you guys know I have a link popping up in the top right corner now to my Pro Tools training playlist. And this playlist contains videos ranging from beginner to advanced. And if you guys want to get better at using Pro Tools, definitely check out that playlist after this video. So with that being said, let's get into learning about the Pro Tools playback engine. All right, so to launch the playback engine in Pro Tools, we need to go to the setup tab at the top. So let's click on that. Then we need to go down to playback engine. And this is what the playback engine looks like. So the thing actually labeled playback engine right here, this is your audio interface. So if I click on this, you'll see all the different options that I have within my computer, okay? So since I'm doing a YouTube video, I have to use this voice meter virtual ASIO, but if I was actually recording music or mixing music, I would be using my Focusrite USB ASIO here, okay? So in pretty much all cases, um, you're, audio interface is gonna be ASIO. And if you have any issues with the interface you have actually seeing it in here, you can actually search for a program online called ASIO for all. So it's not actually F-O-R, it's actually the number four, okay? It's called ASIO for all. And that program will help you get your audio interface in here. Now, not a lot of people have an issue with it, but some people do, and that program will help you out, okay? It's a little, a bit of advice there. Okay, so moving on, in our little settings section here, our hardware buffer size, okay? So this is basically determining how big your buffer size is that is gonna be handling all information happening in Pro Tools, okay? So the smaller the buffer size, the less latency you have, but the more CPU power that you need from your computer to run all of your plugins, all the processes happening inside of Pro Tools, okay? So if you're actually recording, you want this to be low. So 1024 sample series is actually high. You would not want to record vocals or pretty much any instrument at this that you want to monitor. You wanna get this as low as possible. So if you can get it down to something like 64 samples or 32 samples, that would be fantastic. Um, I can record at 256 or 128. That doesn't bother me when I'm recording vocals. That's perfectly fine for me. You gotta find what works best for you and what your computer can actually handle, okay? So the reason you don't see different options in my computers here is because my voice meter will only show one, okay? So for your interface, you're gonna see several in here, all right? Okay, so for our host engine here, this little checkbox here I have checked for ignore errors during playback slash record may cause clicks and pops. You do not want to have this check most of the time. So I actually have to have this check for this specific virtual interface because for whatever reason, when I don't have it checked, I actually get some clicks and pops. It's actually the opposite. So in your situation, when you are mixing and recording, do not have this checked, okay? To just leave it unchecked, you'll be good to go. And then the minimize additional IO latency, this is actually related to this. And this is something that you don't really wanna have checked if you don't have a good computer. If your computer is slow and you don't have a lot of CPU and RAM in it, then, and you're actually using the ignore errors feature here, I would not check this box, all right? So don't worry about it. 
And then after that, we have dynamic plugin processing. So this should always be checked. So what this does is it makes the plugins only work when they're processing audio. So it used to be in Pro Tools that if you inserted a plugin on a track, it would always be utilizing the resources at all times, okay? So this means that when audio comes about that's using the plugin, like it shows up in the timeline, then we'll actually use the processing power. But when there's actually no audio in the timeline, then none of the processing power is gonna get used. So definitely always leave that checked, okay? And then below that, we have the video engine. So I usually leave this disabled unless I'm actually working on a video project, which I don't really do much in my life now. So this is pretty much always not selected. So if you're not gonna be working on any video stuff, then just leave it deselected, no reason to check it, all right? And then lastly, we have our disc playback. And this has to do with the RAM in your computer. And the manual pretty much says leaving this on normal is gonna optimize it for the best operations. And what this does is it takes the amount of RAM you have in your computer and subtracts four gigs from it. So I have 128 gigs of RAM in my computer. So it's gonna subtract four from that and it's gonna use 124 gigabytes, just leaving this on normal here. So if you see, when I click on it here, you'll see all the different options in here and I can specifically allocate it. But by me leaving it on normal, it's gonna be using 124 gigabytes, and that's what I want. I wanna utilize as much RAM as I can, and of course leave some RAM you know, for other stuff that's going on for background processes, okay? So that is pretty much everything in the playback engine. Truthfully, the only two things you really need to worry about in here is your playback engine. You know, that's actually picking your audio interface, and then your hardware buffer size. So your hardware buffer size is going to change. When you're recording, you need to make it low. When you're mixing, you wanna make this as high as possible. So 1024 is the highest I can go with my interface. And that's what I set it at when I'm actually mixing. All right, so keep that in mind. So that is pretty much everything there is to the Pro Tools playback engine. If you guys have any further questions on this, definitely feel free to reach out to me, leave a message in the comment section below, and I will get back to you. And if you guys like this video and you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.